Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today the church celebrates the feast of the dedication of the Lateran Basilica in Rome. It's the oldest and highest ranking of the four uh, major basilicas in Rome, the only arched basilica in the whole world, and it's the church that serves, of course, as the cathedral you know, for the diocese of Rome, the uh, official ecclesiastical seat or cathedra of the Holy Father, the Pope, and not St. Peter's Basilica, as some mistakenly think, though the popes do or have customarily resided there for some centuries. This basilica goes by various names. The original name was Church of the Most Holy Savior, and then Church of St. John the Baptist, one of the special patrons of the, that area of Rome, as well as St. John the Evangelist. It's called the Lateran Basilica because the original palace given to the church belonged to the Laterani family. And yet another name, perhaps the most common, is you know, St. John Laterans. In ancient Rome, this was the church where everyone was baptized. You know, being the cathedral, this was the common practice. You know, the, um, you know, the Christians you know, received um, you know, baptism from the bishop in the cathedral. It's one of the oldest churches in the West, built in the time of Constantine, the first Christian emperor, who donated it to the church, and subsequently was consecrated and dedicated by Pope Sylvester I in the year 324 on this day. The anniversary of the dedication you know, became a universal celebration for the Roman Rite in honor of the Archbasilica called the mother and head of all the churches of Rome and the world. It's the church that, as St. Ignatius of Antioch says, presides in charity over all the churches throughout the whole Catholic world and is therefore a sign of love for and union with the See of Peter, union with the Holy Father. We live in a time when union with the See of Peter is of special importance for us as Catholics. Since the Bishop of Rome, the Holy Father, is a visible source of unity, in some ways irreplaceable and indispensable for all Catholics worldwide. The Catechism teaches, the Pope, Bishop of Rome, and Peter's successor is the perpetual and visible source and foundation of the unity both of the bishops and of the whole company of the faithful. And yet, sadly, unity among Catholics today is far from a reality. Division you know, wounds the mystical body of Christ and is the great obstacle you know, to the Church's mission you know, given to her by Christ to gather all souls to her bosom and lead them to Christ in his heavenly kingdom. In the light of current controversies, you know, criticisms and accusations surrounding the papacy, and more specifically, Pope Francis, what are we to do as faithful Catholics? How are we to react and think? First, I would suggest we need to be careful you know, not to be overcome by all the media hype even among you know, Catholic media sites and, and outlets and so forth, or so-called Catholic media, you know, surrounding the current papacy with so many rumors, hearsay, and half-truths that are spread as though they were infallible truth, causing much confusion and division, further division. Commentators can be helpful, you know, those who report to us or comment on what the Pope has said or did or whatever. and some degree, they are necessary, but we should make sure that we listen only to those who are reliable, of course, and uh, faithful to the Church and to the Pope. And as much as possible, we ourselves should listen to the very words of the Pope himself, get us straight from the source, and we're, we're very blessed to be able to do that you know, most often. Faithful Catholics 
of every age have always been loving, respectful, and obedient towards the Pope, no matter who he was, where he came from, or what style of his, his pastoral practice may have been. This was especially the case with the saints. And they're the ones we should imitate most, as always. Their piety, you know, their love, their obedience towards the Holy Father. St. Catherine of Siena, she's a great example. She, was, uh, she disagreed you know, with the popes at the time of having the residency you know, of the popes in Avignon, France. And she, uh, she was a great influence on them to move back to Rome, uh, to the See of Peter, there, residing in person. And St. Catherine, she always loved the pope and had great respect. You know, towards him and referred to him as the sweet Christ on earth. St. Jose Maria Escriva, closer to our times, he also kind of summarizes for us the, the piety of, um, of faithful Catholics towards the Holy Father, and he gives us the following much needed exhortation. And with his words, it will conclude our reflection. He says, you must love, venerate, pray, and mortify yourself for the Pope, and do so with greater affection each day. He is the foundation stone of the Church, and throughout the centuries, right to the end of time, he carries out among men that, that task of sanctifying and governing which Jesus entrusted to Peter. And again, he continues, your deepest love, your greatest esteem, your most heartfelt veneration, your most complete obedience and your warmest affection have also, also to be shown towards the Vicar of Christ on earth, towards the Pope. We Catholics should consider that after God and the most blessed Virgin, our Mother, the Holy Father comes next in the hierarchy of love and authority. Let us continue to follow the example of the saints. Great love, respect, obedience, towards the Pope, all the Popes, and to pray assiduously, intensely, no daily, for our beloved Holy Father. Praise be Jesus and Mary.